Hello and welcome, Kendra Morgan here with Cards by Kendra, and I have another fun project to share with you today for TLC Designs. It is Christmas in July, and I'll be sharing a couple of interactive cards I made using the double dial die set and the products you see here. This is the double dial two die set that comes with 20 dies. It's a newer version of the previously released double dial die set. So it comes with a few more die pieces than the original version, including the handy little tool piece. It has three frames and I'll be using this middle die here. And I went ahead and printed out this pattern paper from the Snow Family Fun digital paper set onto some cardstock and I also printed out these pre-colored digital images onto some Nina Solar White cardstock and for this particular card I'll be using the mailbox, an envelope, and one of the little snowmen. So let's get started. What I love about the interactive die sets from TLC Designs is that it gives very detailed product instructions on the back. So first I've removed the frame that I'm using and it says to place the V mechanism where desired and cut frame and V die. So because I'm using that mailbox, I want to make sure that the envelope will be able to slide in and out of it. So I'll be securing these pieces down using some low tack mint tape. And then I'm going to run this through my big shot die cutting machine. Step three says to cut four circle dies two dials and one arm die from some heavyweight cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. I'm using my paper piercer to remove the little pieces that didn't come out after running it through my machine, but I'll do this off camera and spare y'all from watching me do that tedious process. Here are the two dial pieces. So I just wanna make sure all of the little tiny holes, the pieces are removed from those holes. And then I'm gonna glue these two dials together and I'll be using some Gina K Connect liquid glue. This is a very strong liquid adhesive. I wanna make sure that all of my mechanism pieces are adhered together really well. Now I do have this arm piece, but I end up not using that because I'm only gonna be using one, one of those slots for this particular interactive card. So here, like I said, I'm gluing these two pieces together and then I'm also gonna be gluing together the little tool. Now the instructions say to cut two or three pieces of the tool and glue them together. Um, I found that two seems to work just fine. I do have some really thick heavyweight cardstock. So if it's really thick, you don't need more than two, I think. I've taken a sheet of blue cardstock that I have trimmed down to be slightly bigger than the frame, which is four and an eighth by five and three eighths and I'll be using a white top folding card base. Now I'm taking the action stamps, the arrows, and I'll be stamping this along the outer edge of the dial here using my acrylic block. And I like to use a mouse pad to stamp on because I seem to get a better impression that way. And I'll be stamping this using some Dewdrop Memento Teal Zeal ink. The first time I made this card, I forgot to stamp the arrows before I put the mechanism together. So I had to stamp it after the fact. And believe me, it's a lot easier to stamp down on a flat surface than it is on something that's got a bunch of foam tape. So I definitely recommend that you do this first. Now that the stamping is done, we're gonna start putting this together. So I'm taking one of the brads and I've pushed it through the hole on my background and then through that center hole on the dial. And then I'm flipping it over to insert the tool around the brad so that it will give enough space for the mechanism to move. And then I'm gonna open up the two arms on the brad and remove the tool. So you can see the end of the dial arm peeking through that curved slot. Next, I'm going to take one of the washers and place that on top of the slot directly over the hole in the dial arm and then insert the brad, flip it over, add another washer, again place the tool on top and then open the arms of the brad. And then of course I want to make sure that it's working properly. And it is, yay! So. It's now time, I'm taking the mailbox and I'm just trying to figure out the placement so that the envelope is lined up with the opening of the mailbox. 
and I'm gluing the envelope directly onto the head of the brad on the right hand side with a pop dot. It's actually a square foam adhesive piece. And I plan on putting the snowman on top of the right hand side. And so the envelope won't be moving through the entire opening of the slot. I think the slot is too low, but once I place the snowman, it'll kind of act like a stopper. Now I'm going to glue the mailbox down directly on the background, but I want to make sure to not put any glue where that slit is so it won't seep through the little slot. And I also need to cover up that horizontal slit across the bottom that I'm not using. So to do that, I'm going to use the stitched hill die from the Aztec Sunshine die set here. And I'm going to cut this out of a scrap piece of white cardstock. I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And then now that I have this done, I'm going to use that same frame that I used initially and cut the edges off of my white heel so that it lines up exactly on my background. And again, I'm going to use some mint tape to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around. Now that that's cut, it's time to adhere it down, but I want to make sure not to glue the piece on top of the brad because the mechanism needs to move around. So I'm avoiding putting glue in that area. And as you can see, I was struggling here, a little piece, I needed to cut that off and I had to lift up the bottom of the mailbox post. Uh, end up cutting that off anyway, because I think it needs to be behind the snowbank. Um, and I didn't like how that strip of blue was at the bottom. So I just decided to go ahead and cut out another stitch till and then I can pop that up with some foam tape and give it some dimension. Real quick, I wanted to mention about the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Group on Facebook. If you're not already a member, um, go ahead and look that up and join us. There's some wonderful card making inspiration on there and we also do a monthly card challenge. So be sure to check that out. The July theme is actually interactive cards. So if you have this die set or if you have an idea where your card would move or shake or wobble or something, this would be a great time to get creative and post your creations into the Facebook group to enter to win some prizes. Now each challenge starts on the 15th of every month and ends on the 14th of the following month. And to qualify to win, you must use at least one product from the TLC Design Shop. The winner will receive a prize of $5 to the shop and a free digi of your choosing. So to enter, just upload your photo to the creative sharing group, or you can use the hashtag TLC Designs Challenge on Instagram. We've got another fun and exciting challenge that will be starting next month. So make sure you watch my next video to find out all the details. To glue down my snowman, I'm using some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive this time, just in case I need to remove him for whatever reason. <laughs> it's pretty strong glue, but not like the Gina K Connect glue. When you stick something down with that, you better be sure that's where you want it because it is on there. <laughs> I added a little um, foam square too to the back of the snowman's hat, um, just because the bottom part of the snowman is gonna be glued onto that foam 
or the snow bank that has the foam on the back and it needed to um, be supported a little more on the top. So I was trying to scoot him up so that the envelope was as close to his hand as possible because I wanted it to look like he was either getting the envelope out of the mailbox or putting the envelope into the mailbox. I didn't want the blue frame piece to be in the way of the mechanism. So I decided to just kind of bend it, bend it here behind the dial. And then I'm gonna cut a slit out at an angle right behind that dial piece just so that it's not in the way. And now I'm gonna put some foam tape onto the back of my panel here, making sure to not put any foam pieces that will be in the way of the mechanism or any of the moving parts. I also added a foam square to the back of the dial to give it some support, but I'm not going to remove the backing on that because I want it to be able to move freely. Since I'm using the mailbox and sending something, I wanted to use a sentiment that had the word sending in it. And I found these sentiment strips and the first one says, sending you a paper hug. And I thought this would just be perfect for it. That way I could stamp Merry Christmas on the inside of the card or even send it after Christmas in January and just stamp some other kind of sentiment on the inside. So I cut a little banner tail out using my mini snips and then I decided to place this above the mailbox in the sky, but it needed something else. So I um, added a cloud. And so I have the banner peeking out behind the cloud and I'm gonna pop this cloud up using some foam squares. Now this cloud was cut out of the Aztec Sunshine die set, which is great, it's a circle and it's got some birds and clouds and a sun and some other things here. And I've used that on other cards in the past. So you'll have to check those out. And now that I have this on here, I'm going to attach this to my card base. So I'm taking a sheet of 110 pound white cardstock that I've cut vertically down the middle and I'm scoring it at five and a half to make my top folding card base. And then I'm going to glue this down using some of that strong liquid Gina K Connect liquid glue to make sure that it stays on. To finish off the card, I'm adding some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew to the eyes of the snowman. This dries clear, but it will give the eyes a little bit of shine. And then I'm also adding some Stickles Glitter Glue in Ice Glaze on the heart on the front of the snowman, which I know is kind of hard to see here on the video, but I'm also putting some of that same glue around the border of the cloud. I've had these cute little mini pom-poms and I haven't used them before and I thought this would be perfect for the top of his little hat so I glued one of those down using a glue dot and here I'm just making sure that the foam tape is adhered down to my card base really well and that my card is actually working and this is the finished card. 
I think this turned out super cute. Now I did want to share another card that I made using the same digital stamp set. I didn't record the process. I was using the double dial die for the first time so I was just kind of experimenting but I wanted to go ahead and share that with you as well. And for this one I decided to use two of the snowmen and I wanted them to be able to play fetch with the snowballs. So this little guy is jumping up to catch it off of a snowy hill that I used some texture paste to make it look like snow. Isn't this just cute? too cute? I just love how both cards turned out. Now just a reminder, if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Also, it would be great if you could leave a comment and click the thumbs up. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you have a great day.